Hello everyone. I hope that everybody is having a very nice morning. And I have very little planned today except for doing a whole lot of laundry and grooming Mindy Lou. Yes, she is starting to look like just one big poof ball, like I could just stick a pole on her and use her as a mop. So, gonna have to do some serious grooming with that girl. And anyways, I'll talk to you all in just a little while. Well, here is Mindy Lou. She's all done. And she looks so pretty and she's gonna get a little treat for being such a good girl. Yes, and I found out why she looks like a big fuzzball. It wasn't just because she needed groomed. It's because she's gained a lot of weight. See, she's developed arthritis, which causes her not to want to move around like she used to. So, we're going to have to put her on a diet because that's just going to cause her arthritis even more problems. Today, I thought we would make some maple apple crisps. And all you need is five apples, three quarter cup of pure maple syrup, a half a cup of all purpose flour, a half a cup of rolled oats, a half a cup of brown sugar, a pinch of salt, and a half a cup of butter that has been softened to room temperature. Now, as you can see here, I've changed some of my ingredients. I am using the whey low brown sugar and I am using my gluten-free one-to-one -one baking flour from Bob's Red Mill. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel those apples and core them and slice them up and then we can begin making our maple apple crisp. Now we are going to place our apples, there, it says, into our 8x8 dish and coat them with the maple syrup. But I'm making a double batch, so I'm making two pans. And so I'm just going to go ahead and coat my apples in the bowl. And then I will divide them into the two. So I'll go ahead and I'll toss this around and I'll be right back. So here is my two pans that I have just tossed with that maple syrup and divided them between the two pans. And now what you do is you're going to just add all together your flour, your oats, your sugar, and your salt. And we're just going to cut in the butter until it's a mixture that is nice and crumbly. So we're just going to take our oats and our flour. And of course, if you're not gluten free, then by all means, just use regular all-purpose flour and it says just a pinch of salt so that's what I'll put in there so I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to mix this up first sometimes it's just a little bit easier to go ahead mix up these these dry ingredients especially that brown sugar that can kind of pack a bit solid And it calls for a half a cup of butter. And now remember, I am doubling my recipe, so I'm going to have two sticks of butter, not just one. And we're just going to work that butter into, into this, this mixture this of oats and flour and sugar. And I will continue to do this and I will bring you back and show you what it will look like before we sprinkle it on top. Now I have set my oven to 375 and the, this pan needs to cook for about 35 minutes or until the topping is golden brown and you're supposed to serve it at room temperature. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my crumbled mixture. As you can see, it's it's large crumbs because it's, it's butter. <laughs> and I'm just 
going to place it on top of our apples. And I know that I have made apple crisps before, but this one is different because of that maple syrup. This does not have the cinnamon in it, doesn't have the other flavors that most of the apple crisps are going to have because you want to be able to have that wonderful maple syrup flavor that you'll be able to taste as you eat this. And you're just going to, you know, push it around a little bit to cover up those edges. And this is going to be so good. And it's going to make the entire house just smell wonderful. Don't those look scrumptious? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in my hot oven and I will show you what that looks like when they're done. Our maple apple crisp is all done. It came out of the oven looking very nice. It's nice and juicy. I hope you'll give this a try and I will talk to you in just a little while. Today's devotion is in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 37 and 38. In just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. You know, the definition of shrink back is to pull away from a source with disgust or fear, to react, to cringe, to flinch, to recoil, to shrink, or to draw back. First, I want to say that today was an extremely trying day. One that brought discouraging news to my husband and I that at first made me angry. Then I cried. But then despair wanted to settle in. And as I tried to think through the repercussions, my emotions started to shut down and I became numb to the situation. As the day wore on into the night, I started to realize that intellectually, we believe that God is good all the time. But sometimes our feelings just won't catch up with our mind that tries to say it's true, but emotionally, we don't sense it. So how do we take what our mind believes about God, that he is good and that he cares and that he cares about us and make that belief affect our feelings enough to help us? Because truly, there are times when, like I experienced today, that hardships can seem to be so hard that we have to fight not to feel numb. And even when we fight it, we still feel numb physically, emotionally, and spiritually and the reason might be because and there is no might the reason is there is a war waging for our hearts to shut them down to disable those who love Jesus and especially those who are surrendered 
And here are just a few things that we need to remember. Remember that emotions are liars. Feelings can change rapidly. They are too dependent on our psychological chemistry, our diet, our rest, our environment, our circumstances, and even the weather can affect our emotions. Don't trust our feelings. They only occasionally tell the truth. Second is hold on to truth over emotions. Truth makes us free. Emotions deceive us. Go to God's word and tie yourself off. Like a person that's going to tie themselves off onto a pillar or a tree during a hurricane. So they don't get washed out into the sea. Anchor yourself to what God says is absolute and true. Third, listen to God over your emotions. Let your emotions howl. Let your feelings rage like a midnight thunderstorm. Through it all, God is still that small voice that keeps you fixed, keeps you in a safe position. The storm will pass. Eventually, our emotions will come back into line with the truth. And then we will be really glad that we did not let our emotions lead us. And four, think beyond your emotions. Another day will come and we will look back on today. I'm glad that our feelings are gone. But the decisions that we made because of our emotions, they're going to follow us. Think beyond today's emotions to the long lasting, the long lasting and possible devastating impact that a wrong decision can leave. And fifth, speak out to God. God responds to audible requests for his help. Open your mouth, lift in your voice and talk out loud to him. I know it might feel weird, but it's a biblical reality that God responds to this kind of faith. And last, patiently endure. The Bible has a lot to say about enduring. It is God's call for us to sometimes just endure, to patiently, faithfully hold on to him until he stems the tide of that trial and he builds and blesses those who endure. I pray that this is somehow help someone who is going through a time of disappointment or hardship because we all know that life happens and it can be at times difficult to enjoy it but we cannot shrink back or pull away from the one who came and gave us life for the righteous will live by faith and so with that I just want to say God bless and I will talk to you tomorrow <laughs>